entire top of the building just blew up. The second explosion and another explosion. Uh, we have a report now of a fourth explosion at the Trade Center. There has just been a huge explosion. It almost looks like one of those implosions of buildings that you see. We heard a very loud blast of explosion. Not clear now is why this uh, explosion took place. Do you, do you know if it was an explosion or if it was a building collapse? To me it sounded like it, it, to me it sounded like an explosion, but it was a huge explosion. A huge... I saw the two buildings. I'm thinking it was, a, it was a bomb because two of them. This is actually a we believe debris from one of the planes that hit one of the towers on the World Trade Center. The FBI is here, as you can see. They had roped this area off. They were taking photographs and securing this area just prior to that huge explosion that we all heard and felt. We made it at least two blocks, and we started running. Four by four, it started popping out. It was like, it was if, if they had detonated. Yeah, it they were planned yeah. to take down a building. Boom, 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 boom. All the way down. Big round of applause for Mr. Jeff King. Okay. Uh, I studied physics at MIT. I did electrical engineering for about eight years. I've had quite a bit of practical engineering experience. When I first saw the collapses, I was absolutely convinced that they were not spontaneous. Uh, one of the first things that I did was to speak with one of my patients who is a retired Army Corps of Engineers fellow who's done a lot of demolition and construction, uh, showed him some of the public source videos that are available of it, and he immediately pointed out that there were squibs, which represent little puffs of smoke essentially coming out of the buildings initially, uh, which were clearly a sign of controlled demolition. He had no opinions beyond that, but he said without, without doubt that it was controlled demolition. That sort of set me on the path of continuing to examine it and trying to gather as much evidence as I could. Uh, and the, the question I pose, what don't we know and why don't we know it, is, is sort of addressing the fact that at this point we still do not really have a, a meaningful explanation for what happened to the, the buildings. We, we have had several studies at this point, which I will go into as to trying to determine a, a plausible scenario for the collapse. As of this point, none of them have presented us with anything that I think could be reasonably called a, a convincing and detailed account of why the collapse has occurred. Uh, and the question that's been addressed previously, the enormous destruction of physical evidence uh, as Chris was saying, the site was, was scrubbed very thoroughly. Uh, out of the entire mass of the buildings that were destroyed, uh, the National Institutes of Standards and Technology, who are now doing the ongoing investigation, managed to save about 200, 240 pieces out of the entire building. Uh, all of the rest of it was, was basically recycled. Uh, you know, the obvious question is what, what does it mean that there was a controlled demolition? At the simplest level, it means that someone had a lot of access to the buildings over a long enough period of time to set this up. It implies, as many other things have tonight, that the people who had effective control of the site had an interest in having it scrubbed and making sure that uh, no information was available, uh, that a, a forensic reconstruction couldn't be done. Even in much smaller catastrophes, we typically will reconstruct things as, as, as completely as possible. Uh, for example, TWA Flight 800 was construct was re you know pieces were dredged off the, the bottom of the sea. Uh, a, a complete reconstruction was done to allow a, a detailed analysis. In this case, the exact opposite was done. The first report that was really issued on this was issued by FEMA in collaboration with the American Society of Civil Engineers. There was basically a volunteer team from ASCE that had very limited access to the site. A lot of the pieces that they were able to retrieve were retrieved by going to landfills and trying to find interesting pieces before they were disposed of. The initial FEMA report uh, basically acknowledged that the kerosene would have burned off very quickly. What wasn't destroyed in the initial fireball would have been consumed fairly rapidly and would have only really served as an ignition for the rest of the material. 
And the second point being that the, the fuel here really was strictly office contents. If you think of a modern office with copying machines, computers, uh, and as has been previously mentioned, the, the smoke, particularly from building two just before it collapsed, was, was very black looking. Uh, this is generally an indication of an inefficient fire in which there is not enough oxygen for the amount of fuel. These types of fires typically burn very cool. They, they are not hot flames like blowtorches. Uh, the cores themselves, basically, I, if you've seen diagrams of the building, there's a large central rectangle in each of the towers that contained 47 columns. And these columns basically were the, the, the primary structural support of the building. They were given the role of supporting the, the whole gravitational load of the building. Uh, since they were so strong, it would have been reasonable to think that they would have withstood, at least to some extent, the collapse. But in fact, as we see after the buildings collapsed, there was basically only little stubs of these things standing up a floor or two above the ground level. The cores did not have much in them that would burn. The cores basically were dedicated to things like elevator shafts, utility shafts, stairways, uh, so you have drywall material, you have a little bit of carpeting, you don't really have any inflammable material in the core itself. The core was specifically designed so it could not function as a chimney. They did not want, in the case of a fire, for the fire to be able to travel through the elevators or for air to come in through the elevators. So they were designed with what this uh, architect, Aaron Swirsky, I believe it was, referred to as a hermetically sealed system. There were fire shutters that were designed to close off the core in the event of, of an event like this. And those, as far as we know, functioned properly, which means that there was a very limited amount of oxygen available. Okay, as far as the issue of what failed and how, uh, some of the initial suggestions, and these showed up in the NOVA documentary, which is a good example of what I like to call proof by computer animation. Uh, Thomas Egar, who was a material scientist but not a structural engineer who became a, a spokesman for these documentaries, uh, indicated that the floors had somehow failed, that the truss